Okay, so in this video, I thought we'd take a look at how to build a simple four-prong setting in Matrix 7.5. We're going to take advantage of some of the history-enabled tools that Rhino 5 and, and Matrix 7.5 give us. So what I have here is just a gem, gemstone that I've loaded in to my scene, and I'm going to start by drawing just a vertical line. Okay, so offset from my stone a bit. I don't have to be real particular on the positioning at this moment, but I just need a vertical line. So there there that is, and I'm going to rotate this from F4, from world center, and I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. Okay, so that'll be kind of a prong position for for one of my prongs. Okay, and the next thing I want to do is draw another straight line and I'll just start from F4 and draw it straight to the left here. Okay, so I have a line that's here and a line that's here representing my prong, and I'm going to blend a curve in between these two. Okay, so here this is. I want to offset this from the zero plane here, so I'll pull this over and we don't have to be real particular on these right now, we're going to change these curves. I just want to go ahead and get this started. So I'm going to switch to a new layer so we can see kind of what's going on. And I'm just going to do blend. So we'll blend from here to here. And that gives us a simple curve. Okay, so the next thing we can do is uh, lay out some profiles. So I'll go to a new layer here. Uh, actually we'll do red, that'll be easier to see. And I just want to snap to the end of my blended curve. So I'm at the the intersection of my green curve and my yellow curve here. You don't want to start at the top of your yellow. You want to be right at the intersection there, the start of the blend. And we'll make this um, a radius of maybe 0.65. So that'll be like a 1.3 millimeter circle there. Okay? And the next thing we can do is draw, we could start with another circle here, that's probably the easiest thing to do. So we'll do the same thing down here. We'll come down here and we'll snap right to that intersection. And I'll make this one a little bit bigger. We'll go a little past two millimeters here. Again, we don't need to be real particular. So I have my curves kind of laid out. I can click on this green curve and I can go to Surface, Sweep 1. Now the regular Rhino Sweep 1 is now history enabled, and I'm going to use that one versus the GymVision Sweep 1 with history. So we'll do Sweep 1, and I'll pick my profile curves. And there's my sweep. So let's go ahead and move this into a shaded mode. I'll put this on a different layer, and there that is. My next step is to pick um, the circle and being that I just created a circle and didn't use a profile we'll need to convert it to a GemVision profile which um, all we need to do to do that is to click on MSR in our F6 menu and now if I go back to it and press F6 again I get the profile cap option it'll now behave like a GemVision profile so I'll put a profile cap on that and um, and that's that. So we'll put this on the gray layer. And I'm not real fond of this being a circle, so maybe we'll click on this and we'll do MSR. And I will change the profile. So I'll click on the profile icon and we get our profile browser. So I'll come down to this kind of rounded square. And as that changes, you can see our sweep updates. So we get a new surface out of that. And what that does for us, um, that allows us to use history to change the shape and position and size of these profiles. So if I want my prong a little bigger, I can just scale that up with the gumball and that will update. Now I'm not real pleased with the shape of this prong, so one thing we might want to do is edit how this blended curve is is formed. So right now the sweep follows this green curve. If I change the handle or the curve that is being used to blend from, 
it will change that green curve. So let's go ahead and switch over to maybe a ghosted mode so where we can see everything. So if I change this curve, this green curve will update. So let's go ahead and just rotate this and you can see that that curve is going to start to update. Okay, so I can move that around, reposition it, all that good stuff. I can go ahead, I can rotate it this way. So we can really start to get some freedom there. So here we have a couple different options. I can take I can take this um, set of surfaces here and I can simply mirror these to the other side and then mirror this again to the other side and I'm just going to do the surfaces. Okay, so there that is. Now you can see they don't touch and I definitely want to tuck these up underneath here. So if I go back to Ghosted you can see I'm going to pick this yellow curve and my profile. I'll pick them both and then I'll slide this inward to where they intersect. And my profile is probably a little too large. Now it's very important to um, to work with the original curve. If you mirror your curves over on accident, you want to make sure you work with the original, which is the parent curve, or you'll break history. So we'll just scale this in one direction, and we can shade this again to see kind of what we're getting. So that's not terrible. Um, and then from here, it really is just a matter of pushing and pulling and reshaping, and uh, you can try rotating these, all kinds of neat things to get different looks and different results. So, so yeah, so that's uh, that's a lot of fun, and that's pretty much the setup for for a simple history-enabled um, a dynamic head, I guess. All right, so there you have it.